this video, we're going to cover neuron anatomy and function. We're going to break down what a neuron is, how the nervous system processes information, and the three functional classes of neurons. Let's get started. Okay, we can divide the nervous system into two parts. The central nervous system, which includes the brain and spinal cord, and a peripheral nervous system, which includes the nerves that connect the brain and spinal cord to the body's muscles, glands, sensory organs, and other tissues. Now, the basic structural and functional unit of the nervous system is the nerve cell, or neuron. The other major cell types of the nervous system are the glial cells, which we'll cover in another lecture, okay? A neuron's function is to receive and integrate information from other neurons and sensory receptors, as well as to communicate information to other neurons. Their job is to send electrical signals from one area of the cell to another part of the same cell or nearby cells. So now let's subtract complexity and break down the structure of a neuron. Although neurons in various regions of the nervous system vary greatly in size and shape, they all have a few things in common that allow cell-to-cell -cell communication. Most neurons have a cell body, dendrites, and axon. So starting with the cell body here, also known as the soma, we also have the nucleus here. Let's zoom in. The cell body contains most of a neuron's organelles, including its nucleus, mitochondria, mitochondria, ribosomes, and nerve fibers, okay? So here's the nucleus, the nucleolus, and mitochondrion. Recall that the nucleus contains the genetic information, the chromosomal DNA of the cell, and the ribosomes are the protein factories. They carry out protein synthesis. Neurons are also made up of structural proteins, protein strands called neurofilaments, which are linked together to form bigger neurofibrils, okay? And they also have a network of neurotubules, okay, this right here, that help move materials around the cell. Then there's the cytoplasm, which houses various organelles. It takes up the remaining intracellular space, okay? That's the cell body. Returning to the overall diagram, let's move on to the next structure. These short, highly branched extensions here that look like antennas are called dendrites, okay? The dendrites, along with the cell body, receive incoming information from other neurons, all right? They receive signals. Some central nervous system neurons may have as many as 400,000 dendrites. So the structure of dendrites increases a cell's ability to receive messages from several other neurons, okay? Then the next structure is the axon. A typical neuron has a single axon, this long part here, extending from the cell body, and the axon transmits messages to other cells. They send signals away from the cell body and toward the synapses, where the neuron communicates with one or more other neurons. Now, axons are usually much longer than dendrites, and because of their unique structure, axons can convey information even over great distances using electrical impulses. And when grouped together, the axons of neurons form the bundles we call nerves, okay? Axons vary in length and may also have several branches called collaterals, allowing information to be sent simultaneously to several different areas. So let's add a branch here, and this right here is an axon collateral, okay? And this part right here, this cone-shaped base, is the axon hillock. It's the part of the axon that extends from the cell body. This is the place in most neurons where electrical signals are generated. These signals then travel along the axon. And at the end of the axon are the axon terminals. It's also called terminal boutons or synaptic boutons, okay? So an axon sends information usually to the dendrites of other neurons at this junction here called a synapse, all right? So let's show this, let's add another neuron here, and let's zoom into the synapse and see what's going on there. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, here's our synapse. This right here is the presynaptic neuron and the postsynaptic neuron, this one here. Presynaptic neurons are those that conduct signals towards synapses, and postsynaptic neurons are those that conduct signals away from synapses. So this right here is the postsynaptic membrane. 
Most synapses convey signals from one neuron to another via chemical messengers called neurotransmitters, all right? So these right here are neurotransmitters, and these are receptors, okay? There are some neurons that release chemical messengers through varicosities, which are a series of bulging areas along the axon. But essentially, one neuron modifies the electrical and chemical activity of the other. And we're going to cover the functional anatomy of synapses in great detail in another lecture. All right, but for now, let's continue to the next part of a neuron. So the axons of a lot of neurons are covered by myelin sheets. It's a protective layer, which is typically composed of 20 to 200 layers of highly modified plasma membrane wrapped around the axon by a neighboring supporting cell, okay? In the brain and spinal cord, these cell types are a type of glial cell called oligodendrocytes. It's responsible for generating and maintaining the myelin sheath. Whereas in the peripheral nervous system, the Schwann cells, which are a type of glial cell, form myelin sheets, okay? And these right here are the nodes of Ranvia, which are the gaps between neighboring myelin segments where the axon's plasma membrane is exposed to extracellular fluid. The electrical signal jumps from one node to the next. Let's take a closer look at this. Okay, so in the central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord, oligodendrocytes, are responsible for generating myelin sheaths, okay? So on the left-hand side here, I think this is the central nervous system, and here's another way to look at this. Oligodendrocytes are the ones responsible for generating myelin sheaths. And in the peripheral nervous system, Schwann cells form myelin sheaths. If we zoom in, here's the nucleus of a Schwann cell, and this right here is the basal lamina, okay? But what is the function of the myelin sheath? Like, why is it important? The myelin sheath is to protect your nerve cells and also to speed up the conduction of electrical signals along the axons, as well as maintain the strength of the message as it travels down the axon, and also to conserve energy. So when the myelin sheath is damaged, the electrical signal is slowed or stopped. This is called demyelination. For example, in people with multiple sclerosis, which is an autoimmune disease, the immune system attacks cells in the myelin, therefore interfering with nerve signals. All right? And this leads us to the next part of this lecture, and that is how the nervous system processes information. Okay. So the nervous system processes information in three stages, sensory input, integration, and motor output. So depending on how information moves through the nervous system, neurons can be classified into three functional groups. We have afferent neurons, also called sensory neurons, interneurons, also called association neurons, and afferent neurons, also called motor neurons, okay? Afferent neurons carry information from sensory receptors on the skin and the body's tissues and organs to the central nervous system, which includes the brain and spinal cord, while efferent neurons carry motor information from the central nervous system to effector cells, such as muscles, glands, or other cell types. And the third type of neuron, called the interneurons, connects neurons within the central nervous system. It acts as a mediator between the two to facilitate communication, okay? Let's break this down further. Afferent neurons carry sensory information from the outside environment to the brain. The sensation of touch, pain, and temperature are all examples of sensory information, along with other senses like vision, hearing, smell, or taste. Generally, afferent neurons are connected to specialized sensory receptors that are grouped according to the stimuli they are triggered by, okay? So when sensory receptors detect an external stimulus, for example, I touch a hot cup of coffee because I'm so excited to drink it, but the barista made it extra hot, what's going to happen is the afferent neurons are going to send information about the stimulus up the spinal cord to the brain where interneurons decide how to respond. Okay, after that, the interneurons will 
interact with the efferent neurons or motor neurons, sending messages down the spinal cord and out towards the muscle that will tell them to move in a certain way. It's going to start a certain action. In this example, I'm going to pull my hand away from the burning cup of coffee, okay? But honestly, I would have probably drank it too and burnt my tongue in the process. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the structures of afferent and efferent neurons. Afferent neurons have a shape that is different than the typical neuron shape, okay? So this is the afferent neuron. The cell body has a single axon that divides into two separate branches. Let's go through this. One branch, this long part here, is connected to the sensory organ. It's also called the peripheral process. Think peripheral nervous system. It's in the peripheral nervous system. And at the peripheral ends, they have sensory receptors that react to various chemical or physical changes in their surroundings by sending electrical impulses through the neurons. So electrical impulses are going to travel towards the central nervous system. Okay, and this leads us to the other branch called the central process, which enters the central nervous system. Central process equals central nervous system. Okay, and it's going to form junctions with other neurons. It's going to carry sensory information to the spinal cord via the dorsal root. Okay, they enter the spinal cord through the dorsal root. Those are the afferent neurons. They carry information to the brain. And then we have the efferent neurons or murder neurons, which are in charge of sending information from the brain to the peripheral nervous system. These are the neurons that tell your body, instruct your body to carry out a task, like removing my hand from the hot cup of coffee or sticking my tongue out because it's burning. Okay, we're going to break down the peripheral nervous system further in another lecture. Now, efferent neurons have the same shape as a typical neuron structure. Generally, their cell bodies and dendrites are within the central nervous system, and a small part of the axon is in the central nervous system. The axons then extend to the periphery. They leave the spinal cord through the ventral root. Recall that the efferent pathways carry signals away from the central nervous system. All right? Okay, so that's the structure of afferent and efferent neurons. Now, let's go back to the cell body and go through how the cell body is arranged in relation to the dendrites and axons, because there are three main types. There's multipolar, bipolar, and unipolar. The majority of neurons are multipolar. They typically have an axon, okay, and several, and several dendrites that extend from the cell body. And bipolar neurons have a centrally located cell body from which a single dendrite and axon arise. These neurons occur in the afferent pathways of the visual, auditory, and vestibular systems. Then we have unipolar neurons, where there's only one process, this branch here, that emerges from the cell body. And we have the dendritic and axonal branches. This type of neuron is the primary afferent of the spinal and some cranial nerves, okay? Now, before we end this lecture, let's quickly summarize the typical pathway of neuronal communication, the three classes of neurons, and how you can easily remember what they do. A sensory afferent neuron usually receives external input or stimuli and communicates with an interneuron in order to produce a response. Afferent neurons carry information from the stimulus to the central nervous system. The information is then processed, and efferent motor neurons transmit a response to the appropriate location. So efferent neurons carry information from the central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord, towards the target area to initiate an action or to cause movement. Again, with a coffee example, the afferent neurons would carry sensory information from my hand to my brain signaling that I touched something hot. Then my brain would process this information and use efferent neurons to tell my muscles in my arm and hand to contract and move it away. Now, to remember which one does what, the acronym is same. Let's break this down. S for sensory or stimuli. A for afferent. Okay, so afferent neurons carry sensory information towards the central nervous system. M is for muscle and E for efferent. Another great one is afferent arrives, efferent exits. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to EKG Science so you don't miss a single lecture. And remember, subtract complexity and slow down. 
To study the next lecture, simply click the next video or you can view the entire playlist. Hey, stop procrastinating!